Hey guys, and welcome back to another Unfiltered Gamer board game review. Today's game up on the tabletop is Flamecraft by Cardboard Alchemy. This game plays one to five players, takes roughly about 30 to 45 minutes to play, and is for ages 12 and up. And in the game Flamecraft, you're playing as an owner of shops and artisanal dragons. You're going to be attempting to place your dragons in certain shops to do work in order to sell goods to the community. As you do so, you're going to be gaining victory points along the way, and you'll be attempting to score the most points by the end of the game. How do you do that? Well, you'll be completing enchantments, you'll be gathering fancy dragons in order to play them for special bonuses throughout the game and at the end of the game, and based on the number of coins you have at the end of the game, you'll also score points that way as well. The game's quite simple and straightforward and easy to set up. Let's go ahead and get into the setup, how to play, and my review. To begin the setup for Flamecraft is quite simple. Take out the horizontal playmat and place it within reach of all players. Then, take each of the starting locations and place them somewhere down on the map where they are supposed to be located. Any of these spaces will work. You should have a potion, an anvil, a leaf, a diamond, a piece of bread, and meat. Then you'll take these starter fancy dragons and set them on the spaces represented with the trumpet. After you do so, you'll choose the enchantment deck you want to run. This one here is purple, it's going to be the easier one, I suggest you do it on the first play, however if you'd like, you can move on to the yellow one. Place one of each of these enchantments in each of the locations on the board. Next, you're going to be having the fancy dragons. You'll take the deck, shuffle it, and place it down on the fancy dragon symbol in the town square. Same thing with the artisanal dragons. These guys here will be shuffled up and placed down. All of the dragons can be placed down into the pool over here, and you're going to be setting five out. Next is the coins, place them in the fountain, and then all the resources can be set up to the left or right hand side of the board. Everything else can be pushed aside for later use. Each player is going to be receiving three artisanal dragons here from the deck, and two fancy dragons from the top of the pile. Then you're going to give every single player a dragon miniature, their dragon board, and the scoring dragon for points. If you're playing with the base game, you'll simply be using a token instead, which is what comes with that one. This is the Kickstarter version, so it has a fancier version than, it already, <laughs> than the other one already has. After that, give one player the first player token, and you're ready to begin the game Flamecraft. Flamecraft's turn system is quite simple. The first player will begin, and they are going to visit a shop. And if they visit a shop with another dragon located on it, then they are going to have to give that dragon one of their resources of their choosing. After they've just chosen to visit a specific shop, they can do one of two things. They can either gather, or they can enchant. When you gather, you're going to gain the goods and the coins and dragons have listed on them. So if I were to take my red dragon and place it on the anvil space, I would score an anvil and another anvil into my resource pool. I would take them from the pile over here and I would place them on my board within reach. You can never have more than seven of each resource, however. Uh, the next thing that you can do is, or that you're going to be doing, is you may place your a dragon from your hand and gain a reward. So in your hand, you'll have dragons. And on the dragons are going to be unique icons. So I here have four, three meat pieces. So I'd probably rather want to the meat space. And I would take one of my meat cards and place it down, thusly allowing me to basically uh, activate the uh, reward of that specific dragon. After that, I can fire a dragon. I can do one of the dragon's abilities, and then after that, if the shop has an ability, I can use it. Starting shops do not have abilities, but as you progress throughout the deck, you're going to be getting unique abilities in the shop in the very bottom uh, of, the, of the card, just above where you fire the dragons. If you choose, however, to enchant, what you're going to do instead is you're going to take your jagged dragon and you're going to place it on a shop. Once you do choose an enchantment that matches the shop's icon, and pay for it with your resources. This one here is going to require three diamonds and two anvils, and when you do, you're going to get the benefits. Four victory points, and one card from the Artisanal Dragon deck. After that, you will take the enchantment card and you will slide it under the location that you are at. That's going to allow other players to score or gain more resources when visiting that location. At the end of your turn, you'll flip any, over any new shops that you may need to place based on the fact that each of the shops that need to come up have to be filled when this whole location is kind of covered. So for instance, if I had played all of my dragons on the Smith Mart and it has been covered on my turn, the end of the turn, I'll draw a card from this deck here and I will place it down, filling up a new space so that people can go ahead and visit that space instead. And refill the park's enchantments. If any of the enchantments have been bought, then I'm going to take one from the deck and put it out in the available space. After that, make sure you check your max goods and pass the first player marker over to the next player in clockwise order. And the game will just continue like that. The game is going to end when either A, 
the Artisanal Dragon deck is empty, along with the Artisanal Dragons here, and or if this deck of enchantments has emptied. When this empties, the game will also end, everybody will get one final round, and the game will conclude by calculating points. You'll get points based on how far you are along this track here, and you're also gonna get points for any fancy dragons in your hand that have a moon icon. Moon icon dragons will give you points based on what you did throughout the game. And finally, the most points, uh, the, the extra points will come from coins. If you have four coins, four points, three coins, three points. Check to see who is the farthest along the board, and that player is the winner of Flamecraft. All right, so some caveats I forgot to mention. Uh, firstly, the fancy dragons, you'll get two of them at the beginning of the game, but you're gonna choose one and get rid of the other one. So you're only actually gonna start with one, even though you are dealt two. Another thing, when dealing with fancy dragons, these uh, guys here, you're gonna have two types. You'll have the moon types, and you're also going to have the sun types. Sun can be played at any time on your turn, provided you have the resources or capability of playing it. You'll read the card and see what it says, and then you'll score points as long as you can do so. However, moon ones will just score you points at the end of the game based on how you did or what you did. Two points if you have three plus, if you have three plus three, if you have the most, and that tells you on this thing here like what you need, so it's bread. If you have three bread, you're gonna score two points. And then you get plus three points if you have the most bread total and two points if you have three meat, plus three if you have the most meat, et cetera, et cetera. So your objective is going to be gathering certain types of resources, having certain um, areas or dragons out, or how many coins you have. It's kind of based on what is on the board, where your characters are at, or what resources you have in your pool, because the base resources aren't worth anything, only the coins are worth something unless you have a fancy dragon detailing that otherwise. Uh, the game is going to have the two different enchantment decks. The first enchantment deck is just going to generally revolve around resources, and if you have the resources, you can basically purchase it as long as your dragon is on the location that copies it. However, there is another dragon deck here, uh, the, another enchantment deck here that has more requirements, basically, as to how to obtain them. And uh, you score different types of points, you can score different types of cards, it's just a little bit more challenging. It, it's not too overwhelming. If you're pretty familiar with board games, you'll be fine with that. This is the Kickstarter version of the game, so if you have just the base game, you're not going to be seeing these fancy dragon minis, you're not going to be see the, go the golden coins here, and I believe the tokens are also not as nice as these guys here, but what I can say is that I do own the base game as well, and that game is spectacular as well. You're going to have this board here, all the cards, everything, all the artwork, it's, it's all there, it looks really great, and all the tokens are excellent. But if you want more excellence, then you go ahead and pick up, pick up the Deluxe Edition instead. It comes with a bunch of extra little things too. Like this guy here is another little extra thing that you can get super cute. It basically is one of these dragons here. It's a little red dragon. I love the art in this game. That's the first thing I think most people probably want to discuss about this game is how beautiful it looks on the table, all the cute and pretty dragons, and how they're kind of seen in a diff different light. They're not just like blowing fire to burn their enemies and whatnot. In this one here, I think the only time dragons blow fire is when they need to heat something up. So this one here at the blacksmith, this little dragon is heating something up with his breath or maybe he's turning on the stove or something like that. And they're just super cute. It kind of reminds me of like a cat game you would normally see that's kind of cute, uh, but utilizing dragons, which makes it kind of interesting with this fantasy element twist to a game that generally you'd see as like exploding kittens, etc., etc. Sundara does excellent, excellent artwork. I am super impressed with this game. This is probably the prettiest game of the year for me. So uh, that alone just shows how the table present looks. You, you come and sit and play and people want to see and look at this game and take a look and I've had people buy this game just by seeing me play it out in the wild. The gameplay now, let's talk about the gameplay. The gameplay is quite simple. You're taking a dragon, you're choosing a location, and then you're choosing to gather enchantment cards or gain resources and utilize the abilities of dragons. That's pretty much all the game is. But there is a lot of different choices involved and a lot of quick thinking that you're going to need to do as, as to where your opponents are going to go, which ones you want to put down, because you have to benefit other players when you do certain things. To help yourself, you might be helping other people. When to use your specific dragons is going to be important as well. You might score one fancy dragon, one point on one turn, and then four points on the next turn. And that could be the difference between winning and losing because this game is very, very tight. The fact that the different locations uh, start popping up on the board and they become more interesting and more tw there's more twists and turns is really cool. I like the fact that they have different abilities on them when they pop up. 
gaining a, a victory point for every dragon type in the town that matches your shop reward. Super, super cool. I, I, I'm really, really, really enthralled with the idea of how this game works because it's super quick to explain, super simple to play, and then it's very, very in-depth as to what you can choose to do. So if you want, you can make your turns very quick or you can think and calculate as much as you want to score the most possible points, which works on all types of levels. The quality of the game, which I've already kind of discussed, but everything here is high quality. All the miniatures are very nice and they're, they're not brittle or anything. They're not going to break in shipping. You don't have to worry about any of that kind of stuff. The board itself is nice. I believe it's probably washer, washer friendly as well. And the fact that you can change the cards up and switch things around is cool. <laughs> I would not want to play this game without the tokens, these fancy tokens now that I've got them. However, I did play this game first as the, as the base game without the Kickstarter version. And uh, that was a great experience, but now I get those little cute tokens and I am super enthralled with them and just everything you can see the amount of time and dedication it took to make all of this happen the designing of the game is great the artwork is great and the world that's put, been put together is excellent Manny Vega is the designer and Sandara is the artist and both of them put this project together with a lot of love a lot of time and dedication and cardboard alchemy made this game Wonderful. I think this was a great team of people and I hope to see them develop another game because this just hit all the marks for me. This is definitely going to be in my top 10 of the year for quality and style and gameplay and thematic. It's, it's just got a little bit of everything and just extra on top that you don't even have to have. They didn't even have to do to include in this game to make it what it is, but adding all that extra stuff makes this game have so much replayability. So Flamecraft for you, you're going to get my seal of approval. This was an excellent game. I am super, super impressed with it. And Callie, my wife, likes it even more than I do. So that probably is a good recommendation for you. All right, guys, thank you so much for watching another Unfiltered Gamer board game review for the game Flamecraft. If you're interested in picking this one up, there's a link down below in the description. The game is now out and available in retail for you to pick up, thanks to Lucky Duck as well, who does a lot of international stuff. And of course, if you would like, you can head to check out the rest of our channel here on YouTube, like, comment, and subscribe. All that stuff helps, and hitting the bell button notification. We also do a live stream every Sunday at 6.30 p.m. PST, where you can watch us play games just like this one, and in in fact, we actually did play the first live stream of Flamecraft in its prototype form before it was even on Kickstarter, so you can watch that video as well. Hopefully I'm like looking forward to making another one though, just to make it more clean, because now we actually have a good setup. Alright guys, that's all I got for you this time, and as always, I look forward to breathing some fire on you, well, I guess making some dragon uh, bread with you, next time. <laughs>